name is Abby Barrera, and this broadcast is for the week of February 15th. And my name is James Cannon. We'll be starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Multicultural Club is a brand new club that started here at Memorial recently. This new club will focus on showcasing and celebrating our diverse cultural backgrounds here at Memorial and the world at large. All ideas and suggestions for how the club should operate are welcome. For now, the Multicultural Club will use a Google Classroom Meet to get organized. The club will meet online Mondays from 3 to 4. The Google Classroom code is S. X N I E P six. And now for an update for Mrs. Rhodes on our Memorial Middle School Library. The school's library has kept busy exchanging library books with students in a contactless curbside pickup and drop off manner. We have received several more books and we are in the works of setting up another book fair, which will be almost exactly a year from when we were supposed to have our last one. The school, the school library's website now has a rotating carousel display of some of the most popular and award-winning books available now to our students. Some of our ca- the categories include new books, popular novels, most popular series collections, Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, Wings of Fire, Lemony Snicket, Twilight Magic, wait, Twilight, Magic Treehouse, Divergent, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Dark Diaries, and so many more. There are, is also a big non-fiction section. The MMS Library also has a fairly extensive graphic novel collection. Graphic novels are like comics and manga offer an incredible opportunity to engage readers of all abilities and ages by providing a visual foundation that helps accelerate comprehension of and author's ideas while inspiring them to find their own voices. The MMS Library website also has entire sections dedicated to information on social media, fake news, research, information, literacy, and how to manage the overwhelming amount of information and fingertips. Stay, stay up to date with Memorial Library Twitter account with tweets on all kinds of topics for middle school students, parents, and families. Keep an eye out for future co- contest surveys and polls to participate in. The school's library website can be accessed by clicking on the library link from the MMS information website page or from the student link page. So please visit our library's website, browse through the books, find a couple to check out, get comfy and submerge yourself in a whole new world. Finally see the four more information links included for a direct link to the library. Memorial Middle School Library Club group starting up. The book club will run virtually with plans to hold another school, to hold after school meetings as well when school reopens. For now, the virtual book club will be held once a week after school at 3 p.m. Click on the link to complete the form with your book preferences. Access the school's library website for Memorial, Middle School, Student Links, or the information page, or click on the formal info link. 
Reminder, yearbooks are still on sale for $24. You can buy them online through the school site or pick up an order form at the front office in the school lobby. They are looking great and they are going to include remote life, quarantine life, and school life. Be sure to pick them up before it is too late. On another note, according to the Cent Sentinel and Enterprise, walking into Mason Bowl and Recreation Center is like stepping back in time for the past 61 years. The North Main Street, Street business has provided entertainment and good old-fashioned fun for all ages. It's a place to bring your kids, meet up with friends, and it's the home of several local bowling leagues. Despite some continuing challenges due to COVID-19 pandemic, they are doing everything they can to keep the candle pin bowling balls rolling. They decided to refinish all of the bowling lanes during the closure and cleaned everything from top to bottom in preparation for the fall bowling leagues. Our saving grace in the summertime was a full-service ice cream stand and mini-golf course we were able to have open May through September, Kameo said. Temporary hours of operation are noon until 9 p.m. instead of the normal 9 a.m. opening. In the article, Are There Any Solutions to Group Polarization? Dr. Mona Wiesmark states that throughout the world and over the arc of time, Hatred and resentment have been passed from generation to generation. For most of us, our desire for justice is deeply shaped by our emotions. Forgiveness and a sense of reconciliation with those who we feel have harmed us, our families, and our communities can be difficult to achieve. It is this pain which is passed from generation to generation that can lead to entrenched racial and ethnic tension and group conflict. This emotional pain is unlikely to be solved simply by recognition of historic grievances, by convening a national discussion on a race, or by gestures of atonement. It is, however, possible. We know this from both of our personal experiences and research in the social sciences that completed over the last 20 years. A more consecutive approach involves the dialectic method, which is an open and honest exchange of sentiments, opinions, and ideas with the individuals we feel are responsible for our pain. We need to understand and work to reduce each other's emotional pain for generations past. Reconciliation is possible. A visit to the International Space Station. A private space company will take four people to the International Space Station next year on the first ever entirely private orbital space mission. The Axiom Space announced that retired NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Allergio will command the fourth member mission, which also includes American real estate and tech entrepreneur. A former Israeli fighter pilot and a Canadian investor and philanthropist. It will be piloted by the U.S. tech entrepreneur Larry Connor, who at 71 will be the second oldest person sent in, into space. Space reports, space.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Memorial's Weather. This report is for the week of February 15th through 19th. Monday is going to be 31 degrees with scattered snow showers and 5 mile per hour winds. Tuesday is going to be 30 degrees, very snowy, and winds at 10 miles per hour. Wednesday is going to be partly cloudy and 30 degrees with 8 mile per hour winds. Thursday is also going to be 30 degrees and snowy with 5 mile per hour winds. Lastly, Friday is going to be 34 degrees with a mix of rain and snow and 10 mile per hour wind speeds. On another note, Friday, February 12th is the Lunar New Year. This is a festival typically celebrated in China and other Asian countries that begins with the first new moon of the lunar calendar and ends on the first full moon of the lunar calendar, 15 days later. Approximately 10 days before the beginning of the lunar new year, houses are thoroughly cleaned to remove any bad luck that might be lingering inside, a custom called sweeping of the grounds. I hope you enjoyed these fun facts in the weather. Make sure you enjoy your vacation by going outside and getting some fresh air. Take a break from all your devices and spend time with your family. Thanks for watching this week's weather and be sure to join back next week. COVID-19 update. Once again, Governor Baker has lifted restrictions on local businesses. Shops, restaurants, gyms, and other businesses will be able to welcome more patrons into their spaces. According to Governor Baker, this is good news and it offers hope that we are on a path to a normalcy, he said. Now we need customers willing to safely support small businesses to dine out, shop, get a haircut, or head to a fitness center. Although no states are yet re reporting numbers within the green range, at least 15 states have moved from red to orange. The Virgin Islands, Hawaii, and Guam are in the yellow range. States are 
still considered high risk are North and South Carolina, Texas, New York, and Arizona. The second phase of the COVID vaccine is underway in Massachusetts. Phase two, which is expected to be completed in April, includes individuals with high-risk health care issues, etc., restaurant, grocery, transit, and other workers in public-facing jobs as well as adults 65 and older fall into a later part of the vaccine's planned second phase. For more info about the vaccine, go to https colon backslash backslash www.mass.gov slash COVID-19 vaccine. Hello, my name is Isabel Munoz, and welcome to this week's Power Up Series segment, where we will provide tidbits of physical nutrients and wellness information and tips. With Valentine's Day being in February, we thought it would be a great time to focus on our hearts. Think about what sorts of exercise will benefit your heart. Aerobic exercise is important to your to the heart because our bodies need air and oxygen to do them. Since our hearts pump blood to all parts of our bodies, aerobic exercise will get your heart working working as well. One foot hop standing, try hopping on one foot ten times and then switch to the other foot for ten. Aerobic exercise is physical exercise ranging low to high intensity. Popular forms of aerobic exercise are brisk walking, swimming, running, and cycling. And that's all I, all I have. Digital citizenship. Breaking news. Being connected on social media can help you get news as soon as things happen, but early news reports might not be very detailed or accurate. News agencies are battling to report the news first, which means we get news faster. But we have to be careful about making sure the news is accurate and complete. Even though breaking news can be inaccurate or com- incomplete, People might share it on social media to get more likes and shares, or to be seen as important, smart, and helpful. Tips for handling breaking news properly. When you see breaking news story on social media, it's important to make sure it's reliable. Learn more about the story before sharing it with others. Check to see if the article is clearly labeled as an opinion piece or a news article. When you read an article, fact check the information. Reliable articles will explain where they got the information and will include links to the sources that the author used when writing their story. Even if an article looks reliable, it's good to check with at least one additional source. Breaking news stories develop over time, so the first reports might not have all the information. Reliable articles will often make this clear. You can look for additional resources using a search engine. If you are not sure whether the article is accurate, do not share it with others. You do not want others believing something that may not be true. In this digital age, we have seen a rise in misinformation and fake news due to a range of factors that include the lack of credibility in online information, the ease with which information can be circulated, and the growing numbers of people who get their information from social media. Another important factor is the increase in political polarization that can bias our judgment about the credibility and accuracy of civic and political information online. Having strongly held political or civic beliefs can lead you to be less critical of political claims that match up with your own perspective, whether they are conservative or liberal. In other words, if something aligns with your overall beliefs, then you are more likely to believe whether or not it is true. You can use some of the following questions to guide discussion. What do you think about it to help you judge whether or not they are fake? What previous information do you have that helps you determine whether the news was real or fake? What steps do you take to check the credibility of the news story? Do you, do you think your previous opinions on the issues may have impacted your judgment? Why or why not? Did you think you spent enough time researching the credibility of the story before passing the information on? If you would like to read fake news examples or an analysis of these stories, you can visit politi- politicfact.com or snopes.com. School calendar reminders. Monday, February 19th is President's Day. February 15th through February 19th is February vacation and no school. Minder, keep yourself and everyone around you safe by wearing your mask outside of home. Keep a safe distance when out in public and wash your hands with soapy hot water consistently.